today we'll be talking about decision tree algorithm okay so decision tree algorithm is basically a supervised algorithm okay that means we are still dealing with our training data set and test data set right it's a supervised algorithm now decision tree can be used for classification purpose as well as prediction purpose that means regression purpose as well okay classification and regression problem in both problem we can use decision tree but generally mostly decision tree are used for classification problem now as the name suggests over here right so the whole data set basically we from the data set we create a tree based structure okay then we either classify or we predict something okay so before before we jump into the core algorithm let me let me give you a glimpse of a decision tree so okay let's let's say i let's say i'm telling i'm hungry This is how we humans also take decision, right? So now, if I am hungry, so there could be a two things: either I am hungry, yes, or I am not hungry, no, right? Now, if I am hungry, okay, I'll check it out. Two things: one thing over here, whether I have dollar twenty-five with me. If I have dollar twenty five with me, okay, I'll go to a restaurant. Okay, otherwise I'll buy a hamburger. Okay, I'll buy a hamburger. Now, if I am not hungry, okay, so then what I'll do is I will go to sleep. if you see in our real life scenario as well we take lot of decision based on certain conditions right now we take those decisions based on our experiences right past experiences now in decision tree algorithm also similar kind of stuff occurs okay but here we also take decision but we have it take decision mathematically okay we'll see how how to do that when when i'll be Mm, showing you one one simplistic data set we'll be working on today okay that time it will be more uh, clear okay now before before we do that so let us let us certain terms there are certain terms we we should know about about this decision tree okay so this is a tree based structure right if you see the node from where we have specifically started dividing the whole data set right so it's a called root node called root node now now the the root node basically we are applying some kind of decision right whether i am hungry or not based on that i am branching it out right now there are lot of branches come up from from this tree if you see whether i am hungry or not when i am i am in the yes portion i have another element over here right that means first i am dividing the root node based on certain conditions then i am dividing the child of the root node based on some other conditions as well over here and the tree grows like this okay so if 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 there is some other conditions by which i can subdivide this restaurant node i should be able to do it now over here if you see the conditions basically each and every node when whether i will be dividing that node or not by by some some of the conditions is called the decision node over here so even this this root node is also a decision node here decision node here okay even this guy this particular node is also a decision node right because based on certain conditions i am subdividing this node again right now those conditions will actually become our features so the condition by which we make a 
in in decision maybe i will put it in this way in decision node the condition is actually applied applied on features okay we'll see that one as well okay so now now we, we we talked about root node we talked about decision node right and there are if you see there are certain nodes as well from which no branch came up that means we have not taken any decision on them okay so and and there are certain other terminologies as well suppose if some node has some parent that means if some node is coming up some from another node this is called a child node over here okay so over here if you if i just mark it down so all these guys this one this one this one and this one all are child nodes over here because they have some parents over here right and there are certain nodes which do not have any child if i if i just mark them down like this guy over here this guy over here and this guy over here right these are called leaf node this is just, just certain terminologies um, to the tree diagram i think if you if you have read about computer graph theory right so in that case you, you may be familiar with this 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 terms okay and now the process of um, the process of dividing a node based on certain certain condition is called the splitting okay and there is another process where you do the opposite of splitting that means you if the node is divided you will you will do the opposite that means you will not divide that node there is this is this process is called kerning we will we will see when when this is this is useful i'm just i'm just trying to give you some of the definitions and and if you see this is the this is the whole tree diagram over here right and and there are certain nodes which have child nodes as well sometimes this 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 called sub tree as well okay because this is again a we can if we just forget about other nodes over here this is like this will act like a root node and it has it has child nodes over here so sometimes this is called sub tree okay now now decision tree let let's let's go inside the algorithm now okay now let me introduce the data set over here okay i'll just go a bit down let me draw a simple table over here okay so i have let's say i have two features okay one is weight weight in pounds h a h t i have height okay and based on that i will label label an animal as a cat or dog let's say my weights are 8 a this is our test data set it's a dog okay 50 40 let's say dog again now 8 9 it's a cat Okay, fifteen, twelve. It's a dog. Nine, nine point eight. It's a cat. Okay, so let me complete the table over here. So. let's say 
we have we have this kind of data set now our job is to predict for a new new weight and height combination whether that particular animal is a dog and cat dog or cat okay so that means if you see it over here it's a classification problem right because my target variable where this in this case it's it's this guy over here right the label the label it's a it's a discrete value right either cat or dog right so this is this is my this is my target this is my target and these two guys are my features right these two are my features now if you see it over here our features can be features can be a discrete variable as well let's say male or female whether if i have data set something like male or female whether they will play or not if the weather is rainy right so in my fit my feature could be my feature could be continuous which is the case in this case because weight and height continuous or it could be discrete as well in nature right this just like uh, male or female or and my target could be and my target could be target could be continuous and discrete as well right so based on that whether my target is a continuous or discrete in this case it is discrete the decision tree are subdivided into two things so if i just mention decision tree as dt so it could be a classification tree it could be a classification tree if my target is a continuous variable or it could be a regression tree it could be a regression tree if my continuous if my target variable is discrete right discrete over here or for classification it's a it's a continuous variable over here right so now the, the two fundamental questions arise over here as i said before when we construct a decision tree how which feature we, we basically if i if i just go up over here right here in our example decision tree we first divided the row divided the node based on whether i am i am hungry or not right then only i am talking about whether i am i have money or not if i am not hungry i do not need to worry about whether i have money or not right so that means when when we construct a decision tree there are two things we need to consider over here one is what is my most important feature what is the most important feature we will divide the tree first with that feature okay then we'll talk about another feature which is less important okay and now the second question arrives is suppose if we know which one is our most important feature okay so then where to split because a feature could have a continuous value as well as discrete value anyhow for discrete value we know where to fit where to split right because if we have a feature called gender male and female over here at least i know either by male or by female i i, I can split okay even though there is there is a thing called by which one i should split either by male or female okay and for continuous variable there could be a lot of values over here in the feature right that means we need to come up with a condition where to split and we need some kind of mathematical tool to determine which split is the best one based on that we will be splitting up even though for a single single feature as well okay so for that generally there are a lot of algorithms available okay so let me give you some of the algorithm names over here okay one of the most important algorithm is called gini okay which one we will be using this this particular tutorial today okay and there are other algorithms like chi square chi square 
we we have information game information game i think another have reduction reduction in variance okay we'll be discussing all this all these algorithms one by one but in this video we'll be mainly focusing on the genie algorithm okay so see if i just if i just go down over here and let 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 us let us first understand what genie is okay then we will be coming back to data set to apply genie just to determine which is the most important feature and why to split so this is the most two important question in the decision tree okay so first we will try to start with genie okay so if i if i just give you the intuition behind genie is suppose let's say i have a data set or something i have a, have a box okay over here inside the box i have two dogs and let's say i have two dogs only and another box i have two dogs and one cat okay now genie actually tell us how pure a particular box is okay suppose if i picked up an animal randomly from this box i will always get a dog over here right that means it's 100% pure now if i picked up an animal over here either i can get a dog or i can get a cat right now what is the probability that i'll get a dog if i just mention it as pd okay so it will be there are total three animals over here and among them two animals are dog that means it will be two third right and what is the probability that if i picked up an animal from here it will be cat suppose if i just mention it as pc it will be one third i'll do the same color it will be one third right now 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 to calculate gini of this guy over here what we will do is we will so the gini score if i just picked up a separate color over here okay so the gini score is pd square plus pc square okay so this is this is our gini score okay so in this case it will be something like 2/3 square plus 1/3 square that means 4 over 9 plus 1 over 9 that means 5 over 9 right it is almost 55% is almost 55% over here okay so if if i if i just compare compare this 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 two data set over here over here the gini score is 100% right and over here the gini score is 50% that means this guy is more pure compared to this guy over here. okay now if if i just go back to our problem set now okay so this 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 is our whole data set right now to apply gini on our data set okay now there are certain things we need to understand about gini over here is gini only works with so it only works with let me change the color only works with categorical data categorical target variable okay that means target variable that means if our if our target is categorical in nature that means we are dealing with classification problem then only we can use gini okay and it always do always do binary split okay so if you have more than more than uh, if you want to divide the data set based on that condition in more than one more than two 
sub nodes okay Gini is may not be the best algorithm to do it okay now now as, as I said over here higher the Gini value higher the Gini value okay the the more pure the data set is okay now there is another another concept called Gini impurity okay Gini impurity it is nothing but 1 minus the Gini value okay so so if I just say the so same thing about Gini impurity so lower the Gini impurity okay lower the Gini impurity the more pure the data set is even even it's up to us whether we, we want to go ahead with Gini or we want to go ahead with Gini impurity both of the same things are actually conveying the same stuff over here okay but the thing is that for Gini the higher the value is the pure the data set is for Gini impurity if you go by so you are basically subtracting from one right because we are always dealing with the probabilities value over here so that means that it will be the lower the Gini impurity value the more pure the data set will be okay now to apply Gini on our data set what first we will do is as our features are continuous in nature right so first we will we will try to sort it sort this whole data set based on weight so we have two features now weight weight and height over here right that means between these two one feature is the most significant one and we have to we will be using Gini to determine which one is the most significant one okay and where to split as well okay so for that first we will sort by weight okay so i'll just draw the table again over here for simplicity purpose okay so we have this guy we have this guy and we have this guy over here so we have our weight we have our height and we have our level values right so we have our weight height and level right so if i just sort the whole data set based on weight it will be something like this right so we'll have eight 8 height is 8 and we have dog then we have 8 9 cat we have 9 9.8 cat we have 15 height is 12 that is dog and then we have weight is 50 height is 40 and that is dog as well okay so now now as i said our weight is a continuous one right so there could be multiple conditions for us right if i just say all the conditions belongs to weight and if i just go by the greater than equals to decision that means our weight less than equals greater than equals to 8 there could be one condition there could be another condition weight greater than equals to 9 weight greater than equals to 15 weight greater than equals to 50 right this could be the all possible conditions for our weight similarly for our height all the possible condition would be height if i just mention height as h h greater than equals to 8 h greater than equals to 9 h greater than equals to 9.8 also we can take h greater than equals to 12 and h greater than equals to 40 right this this could be oops, I get a thing. this could be all the possible conditions for height right now what what we are going to do over here now for all these conditions we'll be constructing all the different different trees okay then we will see the genie value for all those trees okay now over here if you if you just see if i just explain to you okay 
we const we, we just construct the Gini value for a particular node. We have not constructed the Gini value for a tree. We'll see how to do that one as well for a tree. Okay. And then we will compare okay which one is the best one based on that first we will divide the node then again we will subdivide the node accordingly okay so this is our first iteration so if i just if i just say it over here iteration iteration one or i say i'll just say first division first decision or division okay by which we are we are we are subdividing the nodes over here so let us understand the how to construct the gini value for a particular tree then we will be accordingly applying for all all other values so if i just take this this guy over here okay this guy over here and this guy over here we will understand for rest of the guys okay now if i just see it over here weight greater than equals to 8 right so if i just apply this condition on this data set okay so let, let us let us do that one so suppose this is our whole population of sample right so where we have one two dog three dogs and two cats total five animals we have right we have three dog and two cat right now if i just apply weight greater than equals to eight on this guy okay so if i just draw two branches over here okay one is weight greater than equals to eight and another will be weight less than eight right this is the this is the two conditions right by which we are breaking it up now if you see where greater than equals to 8 is actually having all these animals right all of these animals have where greater than equals to 8 over here that means after division also after division also i will get three dogs and two cats and in this node i will get zero dog and zero cat correct so that means after applying this condition itself my my data set is remaining same right so this this type of conditions we will try to avoid so this is this is one condition conditions we will not work with okay so that means we are not able to divide our data set accordingly let us apply this condition over here okay so we will again start with our three dog and two cat dog two cat right now you are applying this condition weight greater than equals to 9 right so if i just again subdivide this data based on this condition weight greater than equals to 9 and weight less than 9 right this will be my my two conditions over there correct so if i just see weight greater than equals to 9 we have this guy this guy and this guy these three guys over there right that means we have two dogs and one cat so in one of our data set we have two dog and one cat and these two guys that means one dog and one cat will be in another data set right so one dog and one cat now we know how to calculate gd value of this guy over here two dog one cat so let us construct that one so so for this guy for this guy my genie value will be so there that is there are total three animals over there in this particular set right and what is the probability that if i picked up an animal randomly that guy will be dog it is two third that means i have to take the square of it that means two thirds square plus it is one cat that means one third square right so it is five over nine correct now similarly if i construct gini value of this guy over here i will just take it over here gini okay so there are two animals over here right so 
what if i picked up randomly what would be the probability for that particular animal is a dog it's one half right because there is a one dog there are total two any two animals over here so that means over here we have to be one half square similarly for cat as well it will be one half right so that means one half square so the gini value for this particular node will be one fourth plus one fourth that means two fourth that means one half again right so now we calculated gini score for this node we calculated the gini score for this node now we have to calculate the gini score for the overall tree sub tree over here right because what we are trying to do is for each and every condition we will be basically getting a tree right so that means we need to compare the gini score for all those trees and select the best correct so let us now construct the gini score for this sub tree over here okay this guy over here so the gini score so i'll just write the write the condition over here so that means we are we are talking about weight greater than equals to 9 this particular tree right this particular tree we are determining the gini score now so the gini score for a tree will be so if I just change the color, the Gini score for a tree will be, so the, it will be the similar kind of construct as we have done for this node base. So here we started with five animals. We divided this particular node into three animal and two animal, right? So for Gini score for the overall tree will be for three fifth, that means if I just change the color, three fifth, okay, into the Gini value of this particular node, okay, because this node has three animals, that's why I'm taking three fifth. Overall, we have five animals. So three fifth into Gini value of this node, Gini value of this node is five over nine, right? Plus two fifth. Okay, I'll just I'll just change the color so that it will be intuitive. So it will be five over nine, right? Plus plus for this particular node it will be two fifth, right? So that means two fifth into the Gini value of this node is half, right? So half. So this will be the Gini value. For a particular subtree, okay. So if I just calculate it, so the Gini value is becoming something like 0 0.53. Okay. So for weight greater than equals to 9, we got the Gini value of 0 0.53. Similarly, if we just construct or calculate the Gini value for this one and this one as well so i'll not i'll not compute it again uh, but i'll encourage you guys to do it okay so weight greater than equals to 15 so this 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 will create another tree over here right so the overall gini value becomes 0 0.73 for weight greater than equals to 50 the Gini value becomes 0 0.60. I already calculated it, but I will encourage you to do it. Okay, so that you can get an idea about wh what we are doing it over here. Okay, so we actually calculated the Gini value for different conditions of weight. We have not calculated for this guy weight greater than equals to 8 because even after applying this particular condition, we are not improving in the Gini value, right? Because the Gini value of this particular set is same as Gini value of this particular set because all of our animals belongs to this set itself. This set do not have any any other animals, right? Now, similarly, if if we do the same thing for height, so if you see it over here, we have these conditions for height, right? So similarly, if you do it for height, I'll just go a little bit down, okay? So we have we have our height greater than equals to eight, 
right so for that our gini value is okay, for height height greater than equals to it again we will be facing the same issue over here right because all of our animals will be belongs to here right so so in that case it, it is an it is an invalid one so we will we will not calculate the gini value here okay similarly if i just calculate the gini value for height greater than equals to 9 it will become something like 0 0.6 for height greater than equals to 9.8 it will some become something like 0 0.53 for height greater than equals to 12 it will become something like 0 0.72 for height greater than equals to 40 it will become 0 0.6 okay so if if we just compare all all of this all of these gini values over here we we can see these two things here right so one is this height greater than equals to 12, 12 with gini value 0 0.72 and weight greater than equals to 15 the gini value of 0 0.73 right these are the two highest gini values over here even if you compute the gini impurity this two will be the lowest one because one minus this two will be the lowest one right so now this, these two are very comparable right right so we, we can take in any, any of this one okay we, as weight is slightly better so i will go with the weight so that means our first feature the most important feature is now becoming weight and where we will break it we'll break it as weight greater than equals to 15 over here okay so let let us construct the tree so if i just now construct the tree over here okay so we have started with five animals over here right so we had we just go up three dog and two cat right so we had three dog and two cat over here now we are applying a condition weight greater than equals to 15 so let us check it out how many animals are there so these two guys so if i just mark it over here these two guys are satisfying that condition weight greater than equals to 15 and the rest of the three are weight less than less than 15 right that means we have two dogs in weight greater than equals to 15 so if i just write it down over here so we have two conditions right one condition is weight greater than equals to 15 another is weight less than 15 right now in weight greater than equals to 15 we got two animals right two dog and weight less than equals to 15 we got one dog and two cat right one dog and two cat just write it down properly okay so if you see it over here after applying weight greater than equals to 15 we already got a node which is pure because we, here only dogs are available right that means our genie value for this particular node is 1 or 100 percent right so so that means we cannot further subdivide this particular node because the maximum Gini value we have achieved over here, right? So now let us try to see if we can subdivide this node again, right? Now what to do? So there are already we have our, we break our initial node, root node based on weight, right? Now we have only one feature available called height. Now, in that case, in real world scenario, we may have more than one feature again available. So that means among them, we have to find again the best one by using the same way, right? But only one subtle difference is over here. Now we have one dog and two cat. That means if I just mark it out, this, those guys over here, okay? So if I just mark it out, so that means after applying weight, 
we have these three records are available right that means height for them height is 8 9 and 9.8 correct so that means my probable conditions will be like below so if i just have it if i just have it over here so that means height greater than equals to 8 height greater than equals to 9 and height greater than equals to 9.8 correct so these three will be my possible conditions again what i'll do i'll calculate the gini value over here and if you see it the same way we have over there whenever i am applying some condition because it is i am not improving in the gini value i will not do that again so similar stuff is happening over here this guy all this one dog and two cat will be available after applying this condition as well in one node so that means these conditions will not bother about okay so then what we'll do we will con we will construct the conditions for these two guys and take the best one best which have the highest gini value okay so i already done that so the highest gini value is belongs to this guy height greater than equals to 9 okay so we'll be applying that condition now on this node so one condition will be height greater than equals to 9 another condition will be height less than 9 right so if i just now take height greater than equals to 9 let us see so if you see it over here only two cats these two guys are belongs to height greater than equals to 9 right so i will write, write them over here so if i just do it so i'll be dividing into two nodes over here again right height greater than equals to 9 i have two cats right and height less than 9 i have one dog right so that means if you see it over here again after applying this height conditions i got two nodes which are in pure right now in in our actual scenario we will have lot of features now that means we will be again and again dividing a node which can which is not pure into some sub nodes which our aim is to try to find a pure node based on that we will be taking our decisions right so here we are stopping it because we cannot go further because we already reached three three leaf nodes we cannot break it further right now suppose let's say i i have a new records coming up for which i want to do the prediction that means let's say a weight of 16 it's a wave weight of 14 okay and height of height of 7 let's say okay so weight 14 means i will be branching here because it is less than 15 right now after that i will be applying my height condition over here which is 9 less than 9 which is 7 that means less than 9 that means it's most probable that that particular animal will be a dog okay so this is how we are predicting now right so if you see this is this is really, really easy to construct over here right so so what we do, we have done it over here is only we have applied genie for all different conditions and we have picked up the best one over here okay so in in future videos we'll see how to apply other algorithms as well just like we have just like i have shown you over here there are a lot of other algorithms right and 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 those algorithms have some their pros and cons like genie have this this pros and cons right similarly sky square information gain reduction in variance have their own pros and cons so based on our scenario we should be picking up the proper algorithm over here okay so so this is how in nutshell decision tree algorithm works okay now now if i just tell you some of the advantages and disadvantages of decision tree okay advantages could be it is very easy to interpret right easy to interpret so once once you have this tree structure for any data you can easily interpret what could be the prediction over there or classification over there right so it allows us to find the most significant features significant feature this is an important characteristics of decision tree right now 
it is non parametric in nature that means it do not assume anything about the underlying data if you if you heard about that linear regression and if you see the videos i have created for linear regression right so over there the main assumption we have done is over here is the underlying data is distributed linearly okay which may not be the case in actually but still we have assumed that and then we created a model out of it right but decision tree is non parametric that means it do not have in as you do, it do not assume anything about the underlying data okay now it, it could support any any kind of data type right if you if you see it or it can support a feature with continuous and categorical data type similarly for target variables as well so any data type the the main disadvantage is of decision tree disadvantage of decision tree i can think of it sometimes it 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 overfits that means overfit okay that means if we grow if i if we if you are working with lot of features and it the, this particular tree grows and grows it may happen that it it, it overfit the data that means it's it's also accounting the noise we available in the system okay we'll see how to overcome those those type of challenges as well in future videos okay now in this is the base of the decision tree okay now you may heard about lot of algorithms called random forest stacking bagging ghosting as well right so those are the ensemble method of decision trees that means we'll be applying more than one decision tree algorithms over there okay and from tree we will basically constructing a forest that means there will be more than one tree we will be constructing if you see it over here we just constructed a single tree from our from our data set right so we'll see that one how 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 those those algorithms works as well okay see you in next video